What's up? This is Giles. So, Madison Ruby uh, was awesome, but the testing panel got absolutely fucking horrifying when it came to the discussion of JavaScript. People were like, JavaScript testing is hard, I don't do it. And I was just like, ah, what is this nonsense? So, here is how I do testing. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm taking a game that I created, uh, actually ported, um, I made a Ruby copy of an iPhone game, and I called it Lattice. So this here is Mesh, and I'm rewriting it in CopyScript, so I can throw it in a browser. So here's a bunch of uh, the code for one of the objects in here. You can see this is CopyScript, I'm creating a, a grid, and it's got various things it can do. It has a, a concept of gravity, uh, you can clear a column, you can check the contents of the grid, and you can, you know, insert things into the grid. And here's the test, right? So first you do grid require, you know, file name dot grid ball equals require file name dot ball. And it's just how you get the uh, the objects in there. And this is Jasmine through CoffeeScript. So describe grid, right? You do a before each. You say, you know, I've got this dot grid is a new grid. This dot ball is a new ball. And then here is just a simple spec. Uh, this is probably one of the longest specs in here. It creates a blank 7x7 seven seven grid on initialization. So you expect the grid rows length to equal 7. For blank row and grid rows, expect blank row length to equal 7. For index in blank row, I guess I should have said for slot, but you get the idea. Expect blank row of index to equal null. Right? So this verifies that it does indeed create a blank 7x7 seven seven grid on initialization so on and so forth. And then to run these, I just do this. Finished in 007 seconds. Yeah, so the way that works is I do this. All right. And as you can see, it is very aggravating. Uh, due to RVM-like awesome, that's with air quotes, of NodeEnv, which is clearly not quite RVM-like, um, so NodeEnv, I wanted to, this time around, um, use a Node uh, version that was constrained to the particular working directory that I was in, because I really like that aspect of RVM, uh, but it requires all this explicit path name prefacing whatnot. Uh, ordinarily, Jasmine Node is even simpler, but this is what I'm doing here, and I just put it in a shell script, because then, boom. Okay. So, obviously, this happens on the command line, and it's nice and fast, and it's all well and good. Uh, there are, in fact, two files in spec... Oh, three. So, let's see. Spec, array, spec. This uh, is all the monkey patches that I put on array, uh, like I did uh, a version of Flatten, like Ruby has, and Compact. Um, and, obviously, uh, spec ball is for the ball object. Um, this is some notes about the translation here. Again, I'm porting a Ruby version of this game to CoffeeScript, so these are some notes about that translation, and those, those will go away. You can see this is extremely simple, right? Um, a ball can gradually reveal its numeric value, right? So this says you create a new ball, you expect the ball value to equal uh, colon, question mark, question mark, you can probably take those colons out, actually. So I'll do that, actually, and I'll just do, 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 boom. Okay, so now these specs are going to fail, right? So if I do Jasmine, oh, my gosh, what happened here? I have to read. Okay, started, dot, 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 F. All right, function ball, this is just the object. This here is what we're testing. It gradually reveals its numeric value is what we're testing, and expected colon equals equals to equal that. So this is because I cargo culted this. The original Ruby version has those, um, oh, that's array, has those colons in there because they're symbols. But that is actually completely unnecessary here because this is JavaScript. There's no such concept as symbols here. So if I just take that out um, and then do this, huzzah. All right, so then if I do get diff, boom, 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 right? See, I dot, um, removed unnecessary punctuation is JavaScript. 
not have symbols. Uh, but the original Ruby version did. Boom. Uh, and then get push origin this. Oh, okay, let me just show you something. So if I do this, it says I'm on the branch master. It just says what branch you're on. It's just a little uh, convenience I have. So, boom. And you can see this is just really easy as hell, and there's no excuse on earth for anyone not to be using task-driven development when they do their JavaScript. Um, obviously, this is CoffeeScript, but, you know, obviously Jasmine Node runs on Node.js, and it is, in fact, a JavaScript library. If you prefer JavaScript to CoffeeScript, I can't imagine why, but if you do, uh, it is equally trivial, um, and I've used it not just in this game, but in, you know, a real production application uh, where it was, you know, quite useful. So uh, that's it with one caveat, right, which is that this is all object-oriented stuff happening on the command line, which is really, you know, how sane developers develop. But at some point, you're going to want to hook into the DOM. Now, there is something like... Um, Node DOM or you know jQuery Node or something like that. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, when it comes to stuff that actually hooks into the DOM, I'm perfectly happy with going like the uh, traditional route with Jasmine and just using Jasmine as opposed to Jasmine Node. Um, let's see if I open a browser if it won't have any porn in it. That seems good. Um, you never know. Okay, so here you go. This is how you use it. Um, and is there a example that I can show you. Hold on. What the fuck? Okay, um, apparently that, yeah, here it is. I don't know what all that other stuff was. But this is what it looks like when you're doing Jasmine in the browser, which honestly I would absolutely recommend you avoid unless you're actually hooking into the DOM and you're too lazy to figure out how jQuery node works. <laughs> which, to be honest, I often am. Um, but when you're doing stuff with objects, which most of your stuff should be, you should have nice, clean, well-factored code that allows you to test on the command line. And it really is just ridiculously easy. There's no excuse for not doing it at all.